We're so glad you've come tonight. And we welcome you to come and pray as pray Johnny is here. And we pray for Johnny. God will help him in every, every way of his life. Every way. God will bless these young men, these young people. And give them grace and give them help. And let his presence touch them and help them. And we want to welcome everyone tonight. Uh, we're so blessed to always have any family members, any friends that would come and uh, be with us. And we're so happy to have from Ohio Mary Jane's sister with us tonight. You're here, and we're so glad you're visiting your sis, and um, just really uh, uh, taking time to do that. I took a couple of days, Thursday and Friday, and went to Pensacola and visited my two sisters. One is in a nursing home, cannot walk anymore, and I was able to go in and be with her son. And that's always a precious moment you have that moment to stand and then my other sister is very feeble and not getting along well at all but we took a couple of days and let them know we love them isn't that what it's about isn't that what it's about letting someone know that you love them and showing that love showing that care family if you can first and foremost to family and to brothers and sisters in Christ and, and uh, to friends and those about you and the world itself, if possible, <laughs> to show them love. God is good to give us refreshment from Him. I look at the world tonight and I think of it as a barren desert, much like Phoenix, Arizona, Two to three days ago when that dust rose to a thousand feet in the sky, encompassed their low-lying hills, flooded their city, and they could not see the lights came on. Because of the darkness of the dust, the earth rolling up from the earth. And I look at the world, I look at mankind, I look at people are popular, what we term this age now, in that degree, that the dust of life is overcoming it. Is that the death? Without being a gloom and doom minister? I'm not that. I believe in the joy of life, the color of life, the excitement of life. I believe in the thrill of life. I believe life is challenging. I believe Life is exciting. Amen. Life is not dull and boring unless you make it that way. Amen. Or unless you allow your mind to let it be so. Uh, I, I believe that life is truly exciting. Life is precious. Every living minute of it. When I was in Pensacola, Pensacola newspaper, young Marine killed coming to home today in Pensacola. And I thought about Patrick Lay here and the hundreds of thousands who have commended, given homage, paid uh, attention to this young man in our county, first to die in the Afghanistan war. Others have died in the Iraq war. He's the first to die in the Afghanistan war from Manatee County. I looked at the headline there in Pensacola, and I thought the world, the world, and America. We're grieving here. Hundreds of people are grieving. Thousands of people, family members. This young brain was 19. Had been in Afghanistan one month, and they brought him home to Pensacola today. They brought this one home here. It's the dust of life. It's the debris of war. 
That's in man's heart, and he can't conquer it. He can't solve it. He can't find answers for it. There hasn't been a single year of man's existence from Abel's slave of Cain until now. And there has not been war between some individuals, between nations, that people cannot be at peace. The Bible describes it in the book of Isaiah, uh, but the wicked are like the troubled sea, Isaiah 57, isn't it? Um, get it here in a moment. Uh, this, but I'd rather read it for this time. Uh, the 57th chapter of Isaiah, the prophet out of God's holy word. But the wicked, verse 20, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. Here's a profound statement, and it's proving to be so. Afghanistan and Israel and Gaza Strip and Somalia, across the Sudan, in Ethiopia, in Africa, in America, uh, whether it is one way or another, Isaiah the prophet said, there is no peace. But there is no peace. There is no peace. Saith my God to the wicked. And you know the amazing part about it is that despite all the, the vehement ministering of ministers and, and the uh, urging of the righteous ones of the earth and the ungodly people look at people who profess salvation and say, that's not for me. After all, I'm as good as they are. I don't need that stuff. I don't need that churchism. I don't need that stuff. After all, uh, I'm okay. They're only camouflaging themselves because they're not okay. Because none of us are okay. Without Jesus Christ in our life, none of us are okay. You can say that you are, but you're only fooling yourself. You're pulling the window shade down in your mentality. And you're camouflaging reality. That you're only here for a while, a little while. I'm only here on this earth. Let me please hear a preacher or a one that's acquainted with Christ. Let them please talk about a better life. A better way. A better way of living. A better way of relationship on this earth with my fellow man. With uh, the beauty God has given me here. Please let someone tell me I don't have to be at war. I don't have to be like the troubled sea. I can rest. I can find peace. Because the Bible said the peace of God which passeth all understanding. The Bible said there is no peace. Then the, the, the same Bible said, but the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. But the Bible said there is no peace to a category, the unbeliever. But the Bible said they that believe have peace. Great peace have they. Psalms, the book of Psalms. Which love thy law and nothing shall disturb their life or offend them. Great peace have they. And you know, sometimes uh, even Christians, my sister, she's been a devout Christian all of her life. Um, I have two sisters, both of them younger than I, and the older one, she's been a devout Christian all of her life. She's been a devoted Christian. Uh, she has written thousands and thousands of cards and sent them out to people across the nation. She's written letters, uh, supported missionary upon missionary, and uh, prayed uh, incessantly for her children and families and just devotes herself to that kind of life. But as she became afflicted, uh, you know, Satan, the arch enemy of Christ, the mentality of the fallen man, Satan, the nature of man, Satan, the fallen one, I'm not talking about some fella in a bush with a red tail, 
has horns and a pitchfork waiting to toss you like a marshmallow when you die into a fiery pit somewhere. Personally, I don't believe any of that. I don't, I, I don't believe that at all. Amen. I, I, I believe my God has more love than put me on the end of a pitchfork like a roast in marshmallow. He deals with me other than that. Yes. And, uh, but, but all, of, all of her life she's been devoted. But now the fallen man, the nature that's in you, and in you, and in me, when trouble comes to me in affliction, when my body begins to succumb to age, or time, or pressure, or politics, and somebody, or somebody uh, slanders me, or uh, low rates me, or I get in trouble economically, or I'm, I don't have enough, I'm, I'm uh, going through life, I'm in what we call tribulation. I'm in a, in a world of testing, <clears throat> and my body is failing me. Then that mind began to speak to me and torment me, and she said, you know, Paul, she called me by my middle name, she said, for the first time in my Christian life, and I've been a Christian since I was a young girl, there's a voice that tries to whisper to me and tell me, are you sure about heaven? Are you sure about God waiting to meet you? Are you sure that he's going to take care of you as you walk through this place? And she said, I'm sick. My body is down. And now I'm feeling pain. But she said, then the other part of me comes back and says, I know that my God lives. I know that my God is real. I know that my God is there. And we prayed together in her living room. And I said, yes, Sue, you can always know that no matter what, you're not like the wicked. The wicked have no rest. They're like the troubled sea. But you're not like that. You may go through a temporary tribulation. But joy will come in the morning, and peace will be there, and God will give you strength, and God will give you help, and God will lift you up, and God will inspire you again. And though you fall, get on temporarily under the weight of your body, succumbing to pain, and many people have terrible pain in their body. Some of you do, sitting right here, and pain tries to drive the victory out of your life. Pain tries to rob you of your assurance. Economic disaster will try to rob you of your assurance. I look down to this crowd tonight, and we're honored to have uh, Sister Dee Dee with us, Foster here with us, 100 years of age, sitting right over here, 100 years of age. I would ask Dee Dee tonight, and she would tell it, and maybe she will say a word before she leaves. She was sent 100. The reality of Christ is greater than he's ever been. At 100, the joy of the Lord is more real in her life than it was at 90 or at 80. Because he never leaves us. I said he never leaves us. And Christians ought to trumpet that more in the church right now. Because in a world where the dust cloud of life is overcoming the cities of the world and sin is that dust cloud. And like the dust in Phoenix, sin has risen to the point where it's taking in the hills and the mountains of people's life. And they're giving themselves to the trivial pleasure of living on this earth, not, not, not thinking that it's all going to just blow out the window one day and they won't be able to spend their days like they're spending them now. But while they're living, while they're living, they can give it to Christ. They can surrender their life to God. They don't have to wait for a day when trouble overcomes them, when problems is greater than they are, when they can't get up in the morning and feel good ever again. They can say now, right now, I'm going to give God the praise he deserves. I'm going to give him the praise he deserves tomorrow. I'm going to walk with God now, and I'm going to walk with God tomorrow. Because God is good for the young man. God is good for the young woman. 
God is good for the older one. Amen. You're never at any age in life that you don't need the power Amen. of the Holy Spirit Amen. to lift you above the shadows Amen. and to inspire you and to give you direction and to give you purpose in your life. Oh, I feel him tonight. Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't let sin overcome you. Never. Here in the Bible, the Word of God, in the 46 uh, Psalms, uh, it's interesting what God does with water in the scriptures and, and uh, the subject of rivers and streams. And, and in uh, Psalms 46 and 4, um, and let me take the third verse because I, I really, uh, well, no, I'm going to take the first and second. I'm going to take the third and fourth. I think I'll read all four because all four are very good. Praise the name of the Lord. And so on the subject I'm speaking about. Verse 1, God is our refuge. Everyone say that with me. God is our refuge and strength. Let's say that again. God is our refuge and our strength. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If I can, by words, by the anointing of God, for a few minutes here, I want to move the church out of the mundane, the colorless, the abstract. And I want to move you into the area of thrill and excitement and joy. I want to see this church suddenly bound, abound tonight with a rolling wave of praise in here and joy to the Lord and get out of yourself. Get out of yourself. Get out of yourself and let go and let God have his way and be thankful that God is your refuge and God is your strength. Well, we got it rolling a little bit. Praise the name of God. That God is your refuge. Yes. How many are glad God is your refuge? Yes. How many are glad God is your strength? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Because without God being my refuge and my strength and a present, I like that, a very present help in trouble. He isn't a tomorrow help, He's not a yesterday help. You know, it's amazing. People who do not serve Christ, who do not know Jesus Christ, have never confessed him, believed in their heart, people that uh, have never experienced it, they're going to tell me with an experience, it isn't so. Well, if you don't have an experience, how do you know it isn't so? If you've never tried it, how do you know it tastes good or bad? If you've never eaten lemon meringue pie, how do you know it tastes good or bad? You don't know. But if I do and have and have experienced Christ in me, changing me, transforming me, lifting me up, giving me peace, giving me help, then I have the best of the argument because I'm not at the mercy of yours because you don't know where I've been. If you've ever met the Master once, you will never forget him forever. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me say that again. I wasn't. I, I like that. Praise the name of the Lord. If you've never met the, uh, if you've ever met the Master, Jesus Christ, one time and intimately had an intimacy with Him, and He's woven Himself in your heart, changed your thinking, changed the way you look at things then you will never, never forget him or walk away from him because he is unforgettable. He is unforgettable. He is unforgettable. You'll remember him in the darkest night. You'll remember him in the highest mountain of trouble. You'll remember him when everything is going wrong, contrary, upside down, out of shape, out of witness, you'll know that come Jesus on, now, loves you. Yeah. Praise the name yeah. of the Lord. And you felt him and you yeah. walked with him. Yes. Right. Amen. You you've ever met him once. Amen. If you've never met him once, you don't know. Those crazy Christians. I was talking to a lady on a plane coming from, they fly you to Tampa, to Atlanta, to Pensacola. 
They don't fly into Pensacola, they fly into Atlanta to Pensacola. And so I was flying back from Pensacola this morning to Atlanta, got on the plane at Atlanta, and was on the leg down here, and there's a lady sitting next to me, and, and she struck up a conversation. She said, what do you do? Well, never ask me that on a plane, because that's my open door witnessing right there. What do you do? I said, I'm a minister of a church. What kind of minister are you? I am a minister of Christ, of the Church of Christ, but yes, but not the Church of Christ you're thinking about. You're thinking about a denominational uh, church. I am a minister of Christ, and uh, it would be without denomination, it's the body of Christ. And uh, she said, um, well, I don't understand that at all, and I uh, am going to read my book. <laughs> End of subject. End of conversation. End of all of it. Because something about Christ either attracts you or turns you off. The name Jesus does strange things to people. Amen. To some people, it makes them want to run away, never try it again, never get around those people again. Never be near them again. And to other people, the name of Jesus opens the door and lets them see a world where they've never been and they've never experienced it and they've never known it. Before they would have said those crazy people, those crazy Christians. But one time they've experienced the relationship of God being your strength I said you're strength. Yes. When you're weak, then you're strong. Right. Yes. When you're down, you feel invisible hands lifting you. Right. Yes. <laughs> when everything is taken from you, you realize everything is given back to you. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, when you're stripped in life of everything you think is important. Come on now. But then Jesus touches you. Right. Oh, my goodness, you can live then on bread and water if necessary. And I know Christians that have. Praise the name of the Lord. Because material things fade away. Amen. And the reality of heaven, the hereafter, and Christ coming again, and the love of God, and the peace of God. But you know, nothing in life that you receive on earth, no remedy, no, no prescription, no book you read, no movie you see, no kind of entertainment will suffice to keep a nagging question of where are you going when you die. It won't suffice to remove that. There's only one thing that ever helped me with death and the reality of the end of life. And I received it when I was a young man. The powerful statement Jesus made in John the 11th chapter when he said concerning the family of Lazarus, he said, but I am the resurrection. Calamity was that day in Lazarus' house. But also the resurrection was in Lazarus' house. Praise the name of the Lord. And brother, when Jesus stepped in there, the weeping was over, the crying was over, and the sisters could not cry anymore. They couldn't weep anymore because Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Did you know he's your resurrection from trouble, sorrow, disappointment, fear, perplexity, everything that can happen to you? Each. Because one thing you can do as a child of God. My sister was waiting on the porch when I left, and she said, well, Paul, if I don't see you here, both of us are Christians, both of us believe. She said, I'll meet you just inside the Eastern Gate. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Did you know you may have some tears when you leave a loved one, but if you know that they're going to be there inside the eastern gate, it will lift your despondency, it will lift your tears, it will lift your sorrow, 
because there is an eastern gate yes. and there is a place called a holy city yes. and we know where it is we know what it is praise the name of the lord and we know on this earth right here the dust cloud of sin that engulfs cities and nations and people at war and young marines are dying and a nation is troubled all of that does not remove one bit of my joy tonight that i have been washed in the blood of Jesus. I have been saved. I have been revealed by God of the truth of God's holy word. And tonight I'm standing here, a man that has gone past the wicked troubled sea that can't rest. And I've found peace with God. Praise the name of the Lord. I think we ought to give him a praise offering tonight in this church. That we are born again. That we have been saved. We have been delivered. Oh, are you glad you're delivered? I said, are you glad? I mean, he's glad tonight that you're delivered. You're delivered from the sins. That you could not be delivered from. Now, I'll say this again with me. I may not get to all that I was going to get to tonight, but I'll get to this. Say it with me. Are you ready? God is our refuge. God is our refuge. And strength. And strength. <laughs> A very present help. Very present He's not like the EMT. You've got to get him down here in a hurry. He's here. He's here. He's not only not like the ambulance somebody sends for. He's here. Before the ambulance gets here, he's here. For the Hank shop the other night, they sent for the EMT two Saturday nights ago. They sent for the emergency medical people. But before they got here, Jesus was here. We didn't have to get him through those doors. He didn't have to bring a gurney in. He didn't have to bring some oxygen. He was here with the holy oxygen of the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And brother, brother Hank shop was made whole and well before he left here. And they testified when he got to the hospital. They could do nothing for him because he didn't need anything done for him. Because Jesus did it right here before they ever put him on the gurney. Praise the name of the Lord. This church gets exciting, friend. You may come here one service and already died and resurrected. Praise the name of the Lord. It happened several times here in this church. Amen. Didn't get John Henry to the church, but he was out there on the ground. But he died, resurrected, but the prayers of this church pierced the night. And God raised John Henry and brought him back to life. A steel pole crushed his head in. Miracles are wonders God does to remind people he is God. I said miracles are wonders God does to remind people he is God. I said miracles are wonders that God does to remind people that he is God. Miracles are wonders that God does to remind people that He is God. He is God in the morning. He is God in the night. He is God in the night. Amen. Yeah, Mary Ellen, she got the Blake. God brought her back. <laughs> you know, she was out at Blake Hospital and God resurrected her. Brought her back. Now I'm talking, of, uh, you know what I'm talking? I'm talking nonsense to an unbeliever right now. You know what I'm talking? I'm talking absolute nonsense to an unbeliever. But to a believer, I'm talking things that thrills your heart, makes you want to shout, makes you lift your hand up. You may not be able to pay your water bill right now, but you feel good in your heart because of the joy of the Word of God that said God is a present help in the time of trouble. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. God is our refuge. God is our strength. I'm a believer. Well, you all don't have any troubles. And I suppose every one of you walk around and no troubles at all. You know, you don't have any problems. You don't have any issues. But we have every one of them, friend. Probably all you do and more. Everybody thinks they have more than the other person anyway. You know, but we, we probably have all of that. But you know, there's a difference in our mentality. There you go. There's a difference in our attitude. There's a difference in the way we look at life. There's a difference in the way, and I'm preaching to someone, 
Of course I am. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody said, I went to church that night, and that preacher preached right at me the whole time. Well, I can't preach to the owl or the monkey. They're outside. Amen. I'm preaching, on, I'm undoubtedly I'm preaching to you. Yeah. And I'm preaching to myself. Amen, brother. I say a child of God has a different attitude. Right. A child of God. The body of Christ is a, is a haven of rest. Amen. The family of God, the church of the living God is a witness that there is a better life than the wicked, the ungodly, and sin. The church is a witness that Jesus Christ salvages. And, and, and brings up people back from trouble and sorrow yes. and gives them hope Lord. in this life. Take your finger and point it right at yourself and say, I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness that God is real, that the Holy Ghost is real, that the power of God is real. I'm a living witness. They couldn't try. They couldn't. They couldn't say that. No, they Their prophet Muhammad's in a grave. Right. That's why the Muslim world will never overcome the Christian world. Right. It's because the Christian uh, nation is a stronger nation than Confucianism or, uh, or, or or any of the rest of the religions of the world. Uh, I can do that on through all of them. Hinduism or. Uh, or any of them, Mohammedism or Islam or what have you. Yes. 